All right, everyone, welcome to our first webinar with SDAR this year in 2021. We are talking about social media success with Instagram. So Instagram is a tool that's constantly changing and evolving. I did a webinar with SDAR last year on Instagram, and I guarantee you many of the things that I taught you last year have changed. So you have been here before. Um, welcome. If this is your first time, welcome. I guarantee whether you've been to one of my webinars or you have not, you will definitely take away and learn something new that you can apply to your real estate business today. My goal really is to get you to learn things that you can apply and you can execute right away. Um, I'm not really focused on just tons of theories and ideas. I really want to get you guys active and doing things that can help you grow your real estate business with social media. Now, with that being said, um, most of the examples I use and that I talk about here are going to be about real estate. If you not, are not a real estate agent and you're joining us, that's okay too. You can apply these principles to any industry, but the examples are going to be focused on real estate. So let's go ahead and get started with social media success with Instagram. First of all, I want to see a show of hands. Type in the comments. Um, if you've logged on to Instagram today, say Instagram in the comments if you've logged on to Instagram today. So, or raise your hand, however you want to do that. So Gail says yes, Micro, <clears throat> or uh, Kate, Kate says yes, Giuseppe says yes, Is apologize if I get your names wrong. <clears throat> so Kristen Callop says yes, and I see Hillary's hand is raised. So it looks like a handful of you have already been on Instagram today, which is great, which means you're already on the platform and you're using the platform. So what I want you guys to do is if you have your phone with you, which we probably all do have our phone, go ahead and pull up your phone and pull up your phone. Follow me on Instagram at Marketing Melody. And if you do take screenshots or take clips of this event, I welcome that. I welcome you to record this. I welcome you to share quotes from this. I welcome you to share this on Instagram yourself. Feel free to tag me and follow me at Marketing Melody. And then also you can use the hashtag marketing melody. If you do that, I will reshare your post to help you get some more additional visibility for your own company. So feel free to go ahead and do that as we are going throughout the webinar. Again, I welcome you to take videos, take screenshots, take photos of what we're doing and share with people in, in your network that you are continuing your education, you're growing your business and you are working on growing through Instagram. All right, so just a quick welcome. We still have a bunch of people that are uh, in the waiting room. So I'm letting people in as we do a welcome. Go ahead and type in the chat box. Again, I wanna make this interactive so that you guys are engaged throughout the event. Where are you watching from today? So I'm located in Mission Valley. Let me know where you're tuning in from today. Michael says, Little Italy. Where else are you guys? A cat, uh, Kate says, Coronado. I love Coronado. We have Santee, Bankers Hill, Pacific Beach, all over San Diego. San Carlos, Dominique and Claudia. Palomar Mountain, love it. North County with Claremont, Bay Park. And Nancy says, I don't have Instagram on my phone. So if you don't have Instagram on your phone and you want to use Instagram, you will want to get it on your phone because Instagram is a phone-based app for the most part. You can look at it on the computer, but it's not going to have as many functions as on your phone. Um, Ali says, Oceanside, love it. So we have people all over San Diego, Carmel Valley. Is anyone outside of San Diego? Sometimes we have people from other states and other cities. If you're from outside of San Diego, let me know. But I, it looks like everyone here is from San Diego. Awesome. So thank you for letting me know where you are tuning in from. Um, next thing is now this I wanted to put out there to create opportunities for us to network and collaborate with each other. This doesn't have to do with real estate at all. I want you to tell me who you're looking to connect with. Now, this can be maybe you're looking to buy a Valentine's Day gift. Maybe you're looking for a restaurant. Maybe you're looking for um, a repair person. Let me know something that you might be needing right now that you might want a referral for. Or if you have um, kids and you want to connect with other state working from home parents or whatever that is, type in the comments who you want to connect with. Maybe it is a real estate need. Maybe you need an escrow person. Maybe you need a lender. Um, type that in the chat, but keep in mind, this can be non-real estate related at all. Um, and I, what I want you guys to do is as you're going through the chat and you're seeing what people are typing in, if you know someone, then feel free to connect with that person. You can send them a message directly on here. 
on the two button, you just change it to their name and you should be able to message them directly. It looks like Lynn is looking for a probate attorney. So if anyone knows a probate attorney, go ahead and message her and connect with her. And if anyone else is looking for anything, again, this can be anything related to shopping. It can be related to anything that's not even real estate related, but probate attorney is what Lynn's looking for. Who else? Anyone else looking to connect with someone? Since we don't have those in-person opportunities right now, um, another attorney. So Micro is looking to connect with an eviction attorney. If anyone knows an eviction attorney, please connect with Micro. Kristen wants to know a good yoga studio near PB. Um, I'm a yogi myself. I love practicing yoga. Um, right now, though, I've been doing yoga online. Um, let's see, Dominic and Claudia, potential buyers, sellers, real estate service, and they're looking for landscape people. So if you know a good landscape person, connect with Dominique and Claudia. Thank you, you guys, for all sharing what you're looking for. If you're just jumping in, we're doing um, just a little introduction here to network and get to know each other. I'm having everyone type in the comments who they're looking to connect with. This can be anything related to real estate or non-real estate. We have someone looking for a yoga studio near PB, eviction attorney, probate attorney. Again, look through the chat. And then at the end, I'm gonna ask if you've connected with anyone on here. And if you have, then that'll be great. If not, then at least you'll still have gotten the tips from the webinar. So feel free as we go on, if you think of anything, type in the comments, I am looking for, and type what you're looking for. And we can go back and revisit that. Maybe you can't think of anything right now, but then maybe later you'll think, oh, you know what? I really wanna connect with this type of person or this industry, I want a referral for buying some Valentine's Day gifts. All right, one more question as we get to know each other. Um, I want to know what is your Instagram handle? So type in your Instagram handle in the comments. I gave you mine, it's at Marketing Melody. What is yours? And you can go through and follow each other, connect with each other, or just see what other people are doing in your industry. But it never hurts to network and grow your connections with people in your industry. I know we have some people here that are not real estate agents. They maybe work in escrow or they do other things or they're lenders. So not everyone here um, is a realtor. So type in your Instagram handle and maybe you'll connect with someone that can help you with your next transaction. So thank you to Eleanor for typing hers, Gail typed hers, Dominique and Claudia typed theirs. Again, feel free to follow each other so we can talk to Allison. She's with escrow options. So if you need an escrow person, we have Kathy B. So if you're typing your Instagram handle, it's usually um, a bunch of letters together. There's usually not any spaces. David is David Taxer Properties. Awesome. So feel free to utilize the chat box. I'm gonna go ahead and check periodically throughout the presentation if anyone's asking questions. And if I don't get to your questions, um, oh, Ted's here, Rancho Ted. If I don't get to your questions, do not worry. I'm going to go through at the end and leave some time for Q&A. Now let's get into the Instagram talk that we all came here for. First, let's see if you guys are in the right place. So go ahead, what I'm gonna have you do is you're going to type the number in the chat box if it applies to you. You can type in all the numbers or you can type in just individual ones as I'm going through. So if this applies to you, type a one in the chat box. You're on Instagram, but you do not understand all of the features that are made available on Instagram. How many of you feel that way? And there's no being afraid or ashamed. There are a lot of things on Instagram that I don't even understand completely. Um, so we have lots of ones from Kathy, Leanne, Dominique, Dee Dee, Harriet. Great. So you're definitely in the right place if this applies to you. Okay. Now type in the chat box. Number two, you post on Instagram, but you don't feel like people are paying attention to your updates. Has anyone ever felt like that? They post and they get crickets. I definitely have felt like that before. And I know a lot of us have. So Holly's posting on Instagram. Um, it looks like Kath, uh, Kathy says don't post, but she needs to. Um, Gail says yes. All right. So it looks like I'm not the only one that feels this way. So let's see if anyone else can relate to this last one. How about you've logged into Instagram with the intention of doing business that you find yourself now on some random person's post looking at photos of their food or dog or other random things. So how many of you have gone down that um, trap of just scrolling and scrolling and now you're all of a sudden thinking, wait, I came here to business. Why am I looking at random people's food photos? I definitely know that's me. I have a lot of food photos that pop up on my Instagram because I like to look at food 
on Instagram for some reason. It pops up all the time. So we have someone, Gail has her hand raised. Gail, did you have a quick question before we get started into the tips? Beth says, I can't remember what my handle is. Well, we'll want to find that out if you want to go on there and post. So Gail, I don't know if you have a question, but I'm going to lower your hand. Feel free to type it in the comments if you do have a question. Oh, just that food appears on her feed. Yes. So you, you can definitely relate to me. So it looks like we have people from across the board that belong in any or all of these categories, one, two, and three. So that's perfect. I'm so happy to have you guys here because I think that we can address some of these things that we've talked about. If you've been to my webinars, you know that I'm all about taking action now. Now for me stands for no opportunity wasted. So my goal is to have you take one or two things from our webinar today and be able to apply them to your business to grow your real estate business. It doesn't mean you have to do everything I recommend. It just means that maybe you take one thing and you start integrating it because small steps add up to make big progress over time. And then one of my favorite quotes I like to share is that success doesn't come from what you do occasionally. It comes from what you do consistently. This is going to be the main thing that I emphasize now and also in all my webinars is that if you do decide to use Instagram and you choose to use it in any of the ways we talk about, you need to be consistent with it. Okay. So if you decide to post on Instagram stories, choose a consistent time frame that you're doing it every week. Maybe it's twice a week you're on stories. If you're posting videos, maybe you do a video once a week on IGTV and once a week on Instagram live. If you do reels, maybe you're doing a new reel every single week. I'm throwing all these terms out here to let you know how there are so many different things to do on Instagram. And I'll go over all those today. Um, David uh, or says, someone asked about eviction attorneys. I have worked with this company right there. Um, so David, someone did ask about that. If you asked about the eviction attorneys, go ahead and message David and get that referral from him so you guys can connect. Also, because I know that a lot of us are on Zoom all day, I've added in, in a couple fun, maybe scavenger hunt things and trivia questions that we can do throughout the webinar to make it a little bit more fun. And I'm going to go ahead and start with a trivia question about social media. I'm asking these questions because social media evolves a lot. And some of you have been to my other events. If you've heard these questions, then you'll probably know the answers. Um, this is just for fun. If you want to keep track of your score, then take a piece of paper and, and write it down. But I have some social media trivia for you guys because I told you that I'm not just going to make this another workshop where you're sitting there and listening to me. So let's see who is able to answer some of these trivia questions. Um, don't type your answer in the chat box just yet. I'll give everyone a chance to answer first. But the first trivia question is, and this is really going to age some of you, because some of you will have no idea. And then those of you who do have an idea, um, you'll, you'll get what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first trivia question I have for social media um, is, what website, what social media website was known for having your top eight? If you know that, type in I know in the comments. If you don't know that, type in I have no idea. Holly says I know. So you're probably um, maybe a millennial. I'm not, not, not quite sure. I can't see your, your photo. Um, if you know, Harry says don't know. Harry, you came to one of my other events and I shared the answer. So you should know. <laughs> um, there's people, I, Chris, I think I know. All right. So I'm going to start and then I'll give you the answer in just a bit. I want to share these trivia questions to show you how quickly social media can evolve and change. Okay, so social media can evolve and change in just an instant because that question I just asked, that top eight thing is no longer something that we even think about anymore. But it used to be very popular on social media way back in the day. So let's talk about the different things you can do on Instagram. Su Susanna says, sadly, I know. All right, I'll give you guys the answer after this slide. I'm going to have you guys type in the chat box again, always, sometimes, or never, if you do these things on Instagram, okay? Type in always, if you always do them, sometimes, if you occasionally, or never. The first thing is the most basic thing on Instagram, and that is posting on your feed. Videos and photos on your feed, that's where you pull up your phone and you see all the photos and those little squares. 
do you always post on your feed? Do you sometimes or do you never? Okay, we have uh, Dee Dee says one, sometimes, always. So if you are posting on your feed and you wanna say always, make sure that you're consistently choosing times to post each week. Maybe you're posting every Monday and Friday. That means you're always posting consistently. Maybe you're posting just every Wednesday. That's still always posting consistently. The consistency is the key. Okay, if you're sometimes posting, that means you're gonna be posting twice a week and then you don't post at all and you post maybe three times and maybe you post one time next week. So you really wanna get that consistent cadence down if you're gonna be doing some business type posts or posts that help keep you top of mind when it's time to buy with your buyers and sellers. Kristen says, I post more on my personal than my business page. Next one, type in always, sometimes or never if you post on your Instagram stories. Kate says, I post when I have material to post. So we'll talk about ways to consistently have material to post. So Instagram stories, looks like it's not as popular in this group right now. We have never, never, we have a bunch of nevers, a bunch of number threes. Um, Dee Dee says never need to. So we'll go over Instagram stories today because um, it looks like most people who are in here are not utilizing Instagram stories, even though it's one of the things that has uh, one of the higher engagement rates more so than your feed posts. But it looks like a lot of you are not posting on Instagram stories. Uh, Kate says she usually posts on Instagram stories two to three times a week. That's great. So it looks like we do have a couple of people posting on Instagram stories. All right, next one. Um, and you're going to think, wow, there are so many features of, of Instagram. I'm going to be overwhelmed to try to do them all. Well, keep in mind that you don't have to do all of these. I'm just teaching you all the things that are available in 2021. Type in always, sometimes, or never, or one, two, three, if you have posted an Instagram live video. If you do Instagram live videos, type in always, sometimes, or never to show how often you do those. Never, never. Did you guys know you could go live on Instagram? Did you guys know that? All right, so it looks like most of you guys know, but you're not doing it. Some of you didn't know. Kathy and Didi said they didn't know. And again, that's okay. We don't know because we're all here to learn. So if you didn't know, you can post on Instagram live. And then after you post on Instagram live, you can post it and turn it over to an IGTV video. How many of you know what an IGTV video it is? It stands for Instagram TV. I mean, how many features is Instagram gonna have, right? So type in always, sometimes or never if you post on IGTV. As you're typing that, um, if you're just tuning in, I've asked the attendees here, which is all of you, if you have a need or a referral that you want, type it in in the comments. It doesn't have to be for real estate. It can be for looking for a referral for a dentist or um, some a restaurant, but type it in and see if you, you can connect and network with other people that might have that referral for you. And I saw someone that just typed in a connection they need. Um, Serena is looking for um, something in El Cajon between 450 and 650, master in ground floor, two separate living quarters or ADU or room for ADU, generally Fletcher Hills are, okay, so look and see what Serena is looking for. If you have a seller with that, feel free to connect with her. She's looking for something, looks like for one of her buyers. So feel free to network and connect with Serena if you have something that might meet her needs. Now back to the IGTV, it looks like most people here are saying they've never done IGTV. <clears throat> I'm gonna say, has anyone posted on IGTV? If you have, type that in the comments. So mo most people have not. Um, Eleanor's question was, can you have a separate handle for posts for your personal page? I will address that at the very end, business versus personal. All right, so no IGTVs here. Next one is Reels. How many of you have posted an Instagram Reel? Did you even know there's a thing called Reels? Because um, there are so many things on Instagram. Now, I want to say I chose five things on Instagram today. There are more than five things you can do, but I only wanted to stick to these five because I realized that it can get overwhelming. And that's one of the challenges of Instagram is that there are so many things you can do sometimes it's hard to know what to do. It's hard to choose what to do. So those are the five things and features that are pretty popular in 2021, especially the reels and IGTV and live. 
Um, most people are already familiar with posts and stories. We'll talk about what might work for you and what might not work for you. Okay, so first of all, um, I wanna share another kind of fun story. And before I do that, I will give you the answer for my first trivia question. What site had top eight? If you do know the answer, type it in the comments um, for the top eight. And that was, um, yep, Holly knew it, MySpace. Did anyone else have a MySpace? I know someone said they, they, they sadly knew, they were embarrassed to know. So MySpace used to have this feature, you could put the top eight people that you wanted to feature and people would get in fights. Like, why, why am I not on, on your top eight? Or people would break up. You would notice them taking off or significant other. So it was a kind of a fun thing. They eventually added more people because I think people got upset that it was only eight. So I think they turned it into 12 or 16, but that's what it was. So let me get into another trivia question. Then we'll talk about a fun story related to Instagram. And then we'll go through all those five things that I talked about. So next trivia question here, and don't type in the answer, type in I know or I don't know. Okay, so this next question um, related, to, related to hashtags is what was the first social media site to use hashtags? You can say I know or I have no idea, and then I'm gonna get on with a, ha a funny story here. Um, how many of you had one of these phones? I literally had this exact phone when I was growing up. So I see Beth is raising her hand. I see some people are virtually raising, raising their hand. So I feel like one of these phones, if you showed it to a kid nowadays, they would have no idea what it is. Uh, John says, I have that phone. So it looks like John still has that phone. So there was a story that I heard where there was a kid who was probably about um, 10 years old. And oh, the red dial phone. Yep. And his parents uh, brought one of these back home. Uh, from like an antique store, just as a fun antique to put it around the house. And they were teaching their kids, you know, this is back in the day. This is what we used to do to talk on the phone. We would have to pick up the phone, dial this number after you hear the dial tone and it's connected. So if you had to go into a room, you had to get these long extension cords to hide and talk in the closet. And the, the 10 year old was like, why does the old phone have a hashtag? And he was referring to the pound sign, thinking that it was a hashtag. So that just goes to show how things are changing and evolving because kids nowadays have no idea why you even have this on your phone and they only know of it as a hashtag. So let me just quickly talk about hashtags. Um, the answer to the trivia question is Twitter. Twitter was the first site that used hashtags. However, on Instagram, hashtags are really commonly used for people to search for different photos and videos and things that they want to look at. Okay, so on your Instagram post, um, I always do it in the comment. If you type in um, the hashtags on the comments, they will still show up and they'll still go on your feed. Let me just show you an example. I'm gonna go ahead and share my phone screen and let me, hopefully I can do this correctly. So give me a second to share my phone screen. As I share my phone screen, I'm gonna ask another trivia question. Feel free to answer it. And I'm going to give you the answer after I type, after I put in my phone. Um, what movie featured Facebook getting started and launching? What movie featured that? Type in, I have no idea or I know as I'm gonna share my screen right now on my phone. All right, let's see if you guys can see my phone. Are you guys able to see my phone? Should be. Oh, there's a delay on the internet. All right, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me and see me now? It looks like there was a delay, hopefully. Can you see my phone screen on Instagram? All right, you guys can see that. Give me a thumbs up if you can see my phone screen on Instagram. All right, I'm seeing some thumbs up here. Perfect. So. Let me show you the hashtag. So if I'm gonna click search and you're gonna see a lot of food photos, some random photos. Um, yesterday I was on a client call and the photo that popped up was this woman like dressing herself in a bathing suit and just kept popping up on a client call. It's a little bit embarrassing, but I don't know how they choose what comes up. As you can see, there's a lot of food on mine. 
So if I'm going to go search and let's see, I was looking up these things called jar cooteries because they're like charcuterie boards in a jar. So the hashtag, I click on the hashtag and then I can see all the posts that are tagged with jar cooterie. Okay. So people will search because they want to see photos of things. Now let's do a real estate one. Okay. Someone give me a real estate hashtag. Throw it out there in the comments or just say it out loud. What's a real estate hashtag that you might use for your business? <coughs> Anyone? San Diego Realtor. So if I type in San Diego Realtor, I'm going to show all the photos of people that tag their posts with San Diego Realtor. And sometimes you see these random ones, like this person on a massage chair. What is that, right? So sometimes they don't always relate, but it looks like for the most part, a lot of these are San Diego real estate agents that are tagging and using this. So if I want to see photos of San Diego realtors, I'm going to use this hashtag. You want to think about using hashtags um, with things that people will actually search for. So sometimes people will put random hashtags, um, such as, um, let's see, cool or great job. People aren't searching for those things, looking for photos. We'll do one more. Kristen said San Diego, or uh, let's do ocean view. Let's see what comes up with ocean view. I'll do ocean view home. Okay. So people are going to use this tag to put ocean view homes. So Instagram is one of the places that really heavily emphasizes hashtags because people like to search for photos and videos. Now, if you're on Facebook or another site, they don't emphasize it as much. You don't want to be using 20 hashtags, but Instagram, you can. Oh, Kate, Kate says he's a massaging a realtor. Yeah, it looks like he's massaging a realtor for that last one. Okay, so let's talk about the first thing I mentioned, and that is your feed post. That's what you're going to want to use these hashtags for. Your feed post is what pops up when someone goes on your page and it's these things right here. <coughs> so I use my feed, <coughs> excuse me, to post more things related to my personal. Um, I do some business things, um, a lot more personal things. I have my kids, I do food things, you know, different things on my feed. I posted some testimonials, okay? Now, what you wanna decide is how you wanna show up to your audience on Instagram. So you want to figure out, does your audience want to connect with you because they are interested in learning about you personally? Or are you trying to connect with people that you're already friends with and just let them know that you're top of mind in real estate? So figure out if your audience wants to see the more personal behind the scenes things, and then you can decide how to curate your Instagram feed. I've noticed that I just get way more likes if I'm posting a photo of my kid or of something that's not work-related. Like I'll post something that's work-related and then I, I get crickets, but you know what? That's okay. Those posts are important too. So you want you have to keep in mind, don't get discouraged if you post something and you feel like no one's liking it or if you feel like you're not getting a lot of traction, people still see it and it's still important to put yourself out there. Because when it's time for someone to call you or refer you, they will go on your page and see your post. So don't get discouraged. You want to choose the right way for you to post and then consistently post that type of content on your Instagram. The question I had from a couple of people is, do I use my personal or my business profile? Now, for me, I always recommend using a business profile if you are using Instagram for business because it allows you to track analytics and track things that you can't do on a personal page. So as an example, here's a video I posted. I click view insights and it says how many people liked it, how many people commented, how many shares, how many people saved it. And it shows you these stats. These stats are things you wanna pay attention to, to know if people are engaging in getting your content. Okay, so you don't get access to this on a personal page. On a business page though, as you can see what I do, you can still post personal things. It can be a mix of both, but having that business page, makes it a lot easier for people to take a look and evaluate if their posts are working or not. You can see that there is a, a view shop button here. I actually need to update that, but uh, if you do sell things, you can click on the view shop button. Um, you can also have people contact you um, and a direct email or call button, which you don't have necessarily if you have a personal profile. 
It's only available on business pages. What does a business page cost? So a business page is free. There's no cost for a business page. However, it does allow you to advertise if you do want to pay money to get your posts seen and more visible. You cannot advertise on a personal page. So best is the price is right. How do you set up a business page? So this class isn't about that, but I will show you quickly because it looks like some of you are, are still on the personal page. To set up a business page, you're going to log on to your regular profile and you basically just switch over the page. The three dots on the top right here, the three lines, your Instagram might look different if you don't have the most updated version. Kristen says my business page doesn't connect with my uh, business page. They change that. Uh, it is supposed to connect, <clears throat> but sometimes it's you have to unconnect them completely and redo it. So I can help you with that offline. To change it to a business page, if, if you have a personal page, the three dots up here, you're going to click on those. Then you're going to go over and you're going to click on, oh, mine's already a business page. It's going to be hard to show you how to do that. Um, click on settings. And then on settings, click on account. And then on the bottom, oh, I guess I can't show you, switch account type. You click on that. And I can either switch you to a personal or a creator because I'm already a business. If you're a personal, it'll have you an option to switch to business. So that's how you do it if you want to switch. I'm going to do that one more time for you so you see that. Three lines on the top, I call that the hamburger. Click on that on the top corner. And then you're going to click over here and it's going to be on your, oh, I just did it, settings. Settings, click on account and then you'll see it at the very bottom. So that's how you do it. So the next type of feature I talked about was Instagram stories. Instagram stories is the thing that you see <clears throat> on the, when you log in the top, the, these circles, these are Instagram stories. Okay. Um, and people like this content because it is ephemeral content. Ephemeral content means that it is not something that stays on there forever. It's fleeting. It's like uh, bubbles or footprints. Those are ephemeral things. So people don't want to feel like they're missing out because it disappears. So they're going to click on it because they want to see, oh, what stories did this person post today? Otherwise, if I don't click on it, I'm going to miss out on it. So Instagram stories is a little bit more engaging and interactive. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, if you do post on stories, you wanna do it consistently. I try to post on stories at least every other day. So I have some content up there. And I'm gonna show you a couple things you can do that will help that you can apply to things that you're doing in real estate. So for example, I was promoting my webinar yesterday about STAR. I added this countdown ticker right here, Instagram webinar with STAR. Now, this is an interactive element that you can add to your Instagram stories to get people to connect with it. Uh, I click on it and it says it's happening right now. If it wasn't happening right now, I could click a button that notifies me of when it happens. If you are having some sort of open house, some sort of event, some sort of webinar, you can use this feature and people can click on it to get notified. Now, for example, if I click on my notifications, I'll see that there were people that clicked on it to get notified um, and see that pops up. So a Falduto group turned on your countdown reminder for SDAR at the very bottom right there. So thank you for doing that. So that means they clicked on it. And then when I went on this webinar, they got notified that I was going on the webinar, creating virtual events and doing things like reminders really help people remember to attend what you're doing. Since most things right now are virtual, we have to think of some extra things you can do to really engage people. And using Instagram stories is one way to remind people and engage people with your content. Question for this is how do you invite your friends from your personal account to your new business? So on Instagram, when you switch your page over to a business page, it keeps all of your followers and friends. You don't have to reinvite people. It's not like Facebook where you have to reinvite people all over. So you don't have to worry about that on Instagram. It switches people right over to your account. So that's one benefit of it that is different than Facebook. So now that we've talked about the Instagram stories, I want to share a few more features on Instagram stories that you can utilize for real estate. 
and you want to make it interactive. Okay, so oh, we have more questions on the business account. Dee Dee says, can you change your handle to be more professional? Yes, you can absolutely change your handle. Um, on that, you click on the bottom right, which is your profile, and click on edit profile. And then on edit profile, where it says username, you can change your username to whatever you want, as long as it's still available. So that's where you would do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a look at all the questions. I'll answer all the rest of the questions at the end so we can get through all the different elements of, of Instagram. So on Instagram stories, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example of, let's see, posting a stories and how I can make it more interactive. Okay. So let's go ahead and open up my stories. I'm going to click that plus button right there. I'm going to choose story on the bottom. And what I can do here is show an example. I'm going to have you guys all wave. If you don't have your cameras on, turn your camera on. And I'm going to have you guys wave on this Instagram stories. All right. Most of you guys are not are camera shy today. I am teaching my STAR webinar on Instagram and I'm having some examples right now to show the different features of Instagram stories. You know what? I think it, can you guys see my screen still at pause it because I was doing that. All right, let me do this quick share and I will show you what I did and I'll share it back again. So I went ahead and I'm sharing this and then let's make sure that the share keeps going. I think it paused it as I was using it. Well, I'm gonna have to try that one more time. So as we are sharing the phone again, I'm gonna go to another trivia question for you guys to keep this fun and interactive. <clears throat> what website, what social media website is popular if you're planning a wedding or party? And I don't know if I gave the last answer. The last answer about the movie was so the social network, the social network. So how many of you knew that movie? This current question, what social media site is popular if you're planning a wedding or a party? So don't type the answer in. You want to think about it and I'll give you the answer later. And let me figure out the, my screen share again with my phone and then we'll get back to the Instagram. All right, my phone should be back. Do you guys see my phone again? Let me know. It should be on the screen that says mirroring. Awesome. All right. We're back in business. Okay. So we've talked about the Instagram feed posts. I have a lot of people with babies on my feed too. So you'll probably see that in food popping up all the time. So what I did when I just posted this is that I wanted to make this interactive. So I added a poll. I says, are you in this webinar? Someone can go type it, click yes or no. So if you are here, pull up your Instagram, open this up and type in yes. And this is the thing you can ask people on their own, on your own Instagram stories. You can post things like that. I'll show you, let's see if I have any examples. Um, I'll show you Alex. So this is a, a loan officer. He's a client of mine. And here he's asking about IG interiors, asking which if people like this or they don't like it, people can click yes or no and answer the poll there. Okay, so there's many different ways to be interactive on Instagram stories. And you want to think of the ways that work for you. Okay. You want to be able to uh, showcase things that help your business, showcase things that are personal to you. There are going to be a lot of advertisements. I kind of just scroll through those. But to do that, I'll show you how to do the Instagram story. And hopefully it won't de delete the share this time. You can also, let's see, I'm going to share a post. Okay, so I'm gonna, you can share your own post on your stories. Click on your post, click this airplane button, add to your story. 
So I'm going to add it to my story. And as I do this, I can rearrange it and I can do different things and I can type and I can type in words and different things to it. It's hard to show because it keeps making me not share my screen when I show that. So that's Instagram stories. <clears throat> the other things I've talked about were Instagram live. Instagram live is where you go live and Instagram live is great because when you go live, it shows up on the very top of your stories. See that where this lady Amy is instead of Amy, it would say so-and-so is live live always is first. It's always at the very top of people's feeds to go live. You just click on the plus button and then you click on the live button down here. Okay. So with live video, people are afraid to do live video, but I'm going to tell you, it is one of the most engaging and interactive tools on Instagram. So I did a live video on Instagram last week and something you can do in live <clears throat> is that you can put it on your feed, which is right here. So I posted it on my feed after, and I also sent it to IGTV. So if you're doing something such as wanting to give real estate tips, wanting to just do something consistent to share about your real estate business, you can definitely use the live video feature. I highly recommend doing that. Something else that I did, <clears throat> excuse me, is that you can bring someone on in the audience who's watching. So this was a person that was just watching my Instagram and said they wanted to come on. So I brought her on Instagram live. Now, how many of you can see yourself possibly using that for your real estate business? Any ideas on how to use it or to showcase? Hmm. Something stuck in my throat today. Dee Dee says me. Someone says yes. Okay, so I'll give you the answer to the last question that I just asked. The last trivia question I just asked, the answer is Pinterest, a site to use for planning weddings and parties, Pinterest. I know that I use it for planning birthday parties and weddings when we used to be able to do that. David said, great idea to use it when we are allowed to do open houses again. Yes. Live video tours are great when you can do an open house, or if you can't do a real open house, you can be at the house and do a virtual open house by doing the live video tour. Okay, so because you can't have 20 people coming in at once anymore, go to the house and just go live and show people the house and walk them around the house. So that's definitely one way that you can use Instagram Live. Um, other things you can do for real estate, you can go live and you can share <clears throat> maybe market updates. You can also go live oh, and talk about neighborhoods. Maybe you're walking around in a neighborhood. There's many different ways to use the live feature. You just have to be comfortable with going live, which I know a lot of people are a little bit afraid of doing that. The other thing I talked about was the IGTV. <clears throat> so IGTV is a series that you make and here's how to access it. On your homepage here, there is this little TV button with a squiggly line right there. Okay, I'm gonna show you again. I'm on the homepage. Oh, that's a client, so I don't know why it switched over. I'm on my homepage and do you see that little TV with a squiggly line? It's very small, right on top of my photos and videos. You see that? Now, these are my IGTV videos that I've made. So these are IGTV videos. Nope, oh, it's saying no internet connection. All right, hopefully you guys are still there. For some reason it's saying there's no internet connection here, but this is the beauty of working from home with other people using the internet, right? So IGTV videos are things that you can do to make a series of different videos. I'm hoping this shows up, but if not, I'm gonna go over to the search. You can also click on the search bar and it has on the top left IGTV and search for other people's IGTV videos. IGTV, think of it as different series of videos that you'll make that stay on your Instagram feed. So if you have a series of real estate tips, you would click on there and you would say, um, you, would, you would name that series real estate tips. If you had a, um, a series of different videos, then you would say, like I have a marketing tips. I'd have a series of marketing tip videos. People can click on that and see all my marketing tips. So that's IGTV. 
Now, here's the thing to keep in mind. If you post a video to your feed and it's longer than one minute, you can automatically add it to an IGTV. There will be a button that has you click and also transfer it to IGTV as well as your feed. So keep that in mind as you're posting videos on your feed that it can go on IGTV if it's over um, one minute. See if it's working now. All right, here we go. So these are people right now that are live. And right now these are IGTV videos. Again, here's a maple, apple thing. Here's a salad thing. These are different videos people are making on IGTV. Again, I have all these food videos because I love looking at food things on Instagram. You might not have these. You might have different things than, than what I do. So does anyone have any ideas of how they can utilize IGTV? And you wanna think of your content and your audience. So for example, if you are working and you're focusing on people who are senior citizens to downsize, they're probably not on IGTV. You probably don't need to worry about it. Okay, if you are working with a lot of first time home buyers and they're millennials, they probably will be on Instagram and doing different things on Instagram. So think of who your audience is. You don't have to do all these things. I just want to give you the options so you understand them if you do want to. And if you choose to do any of these things, make sure you do it consistently so it's not just randomly trying it out. Test it out. When I say test it out, I mean do it for at least four to six weeks to see if it works. Do something every single week. Then check out the analytics. Check out to see if people are paying attention, if it's giving you a boost, and then decide if it's for you. Because content, it takes time. It takes time away from you going out to show homes, going out and prospecting. But think of content creation as a part of prospecting, as a part of generating new business and revenue. And that will help you dedicate the time to do this more. I always recommend, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or whatever site you're using, to commit a set time every week to work on your social media content, put it on your calendar, make it so it's a non-negotiable thing that you won't want to miss in order to see it as just as important as calling people, as going door to door. Well, we don't really go door to door, door now, but you guys know what I'm saying. Kristen says, can we use our phones to IDTV or Poe camera? Um, so IGTV, you can use your phone directly. You can also make a video and upload it to IGTV, but using your phone is just fine. I'm all about keeping it simple and making it as easy as possible to create your content. So if you're first starting out with video and live video, keep it simple, use your phone. It can be intimidating because you might see some realtors have these really outlandish and perfectly produced videos and it can be intimidating, but you know what? That's okay to have these casual videos because your buyers will connect with you because they see that you're being casual. They're, you're humanizing your brand. So it's okay to not have these perfectly polished produced videos. Those are great too, for other reasons, but on social media, when you're just trying to stay top of mind, when you're just trying to be consistent, it's okay to do things as easy as possible and create videos on the fly and not have to um, hire a videographer for every single video. All right, so last thing I wanna mention is Instagram Reels. Now I saw that almost no one on here said that they've posted a Reel before. I'm not gonna to touch on that too much, um, but Instagram Reels can be a great way to grow your real estate business if you wanna stand out because most people aren't doing it. I'll show you an example of a, someone that I follow that's in real estate that does use Reels and she does a pretty good job at the Reels. So this is um, Melissa and her company is the Avenue Home Collective. If you click on her reels, which is right here, this reel button, you can see she has different reels related to home buying. Okay, so is it time for me to sell a home? It's a, these very short clips and videos that you create that get people to watch and they watch them and consume them because they're very short and sweet. They're also pretty interactive and sometimes funny. So if this is something you want to do, then be consistent with it. And there are some people using it for their real estate business, but think about your audience and think about if they're going to consume this kind of content. So that was one that she made about three types of homeowners who should sell their home right now. Um, here's another real estate video that she made, three reasons that homes fall out of escrow. But again, it is something that takes time. You can create these on your own, on the app. 
so you don't have to have a professional videographer. You can use your phone and you can upload them right then and there. So any other questions right now, I'm going to talk about a few other things that you can do. What was the name of the app? Um, it's called Reels and it's on Instagram. So it's directly on Instagram. It's called Instagram Reels. It's not a separate name. Hope that answers your question, Didi. If it doesn't, let me know. I'm not sure that answers your question. So I shared five different things you can do on Instagram. But again, I'm only asking you to choose one thing consistently if you do want to start using the app to grow your business. So one thing consistently. Now, the other thing I'm going to share, I'm going to do a trivia question. Then I'm going to share what else you need to be doing on Instagram if you really want to grow your business. Then I'm going to wrap this up because we have an hour and then I'll stay on for additional Q&A if you want some more uh, time with me after the webinar. Okay, one more trivia question. And that is how many... Oh, actually, I'm going to ask this one. What does UGC stand for? It's a social media acronym or abbreviation. What does UGC stand for? UGC. If you know, type in. I know. If you don't know, say I have no idea. UGC. It's a social media term. So no idea. Okay, I'll get back and I'll answer that. Oh, my phone keeps turning off. You can see a picture of my cute baby that is now much older than that. <laughs> so those are the types of content we talked about, but something else that's really important that I want you guys to do. And even if you're not posting yourself, then I want you to start doing this. If you want to get visible on Instagram, you need to comment and interact with other people's content and you need to do that consistently. Okay. So it's, you can go ahead and just like people's content and like it, but it's more powerful if you actually leave a comment um, on their feed. So here's one. This is another real estate company here, the Goodall Group. And Jeff is a, uh, has been a wonderful client of mine. I'm going to leave him a comment. Thanks for sharing. And the reason you want to also interact with other people's content is because you probably don't like when no one interacts with your content well, other people feel the same way. So you want to make sure that you are giving back to the community, you're interacting, you're engaging. So I always recommend setting aside time to do this. Maybe it's when you wake up in the morning. Maybe it is when you are going to bed. Maybe it's when you're watching a TV show. Have a, an intention to interact at least once or twice a week. This is for any network that you might be on. So if you're going to be using Instagram, Facebook, same thing, LinkedIn, you want to make sure that you are taking time to interact with people. So it's not just you posting things saying, hey, look at me, but you're also making sure that you're commenting. And this is another realtor that I follow and she's doing an Instagram reel here as well. But you want to definitely make sure that you're not just spending your time posting, hoping people will like your content. You need to also engage and interact. So I'm going to go back to the slides. We're going to wrap that up and then we'll do more Q&A at the end. All right, let me see. Let me know if you can see the screen again. Can you guys see the screen again? And the answer to the last question, what does UGC? It stands for user generated content. That means other people are posting about your business on social media. They're creating content for you that you don't have to create. That's a great way to grow your business and visibility is to get other people to post for you, right? So I want to, before I wrap up, I want to share with you a marketing success mastermind event that I'm going to be hosting and invite you guys to join me. Um, this is going to be an event coming up at the end of the month. Uh, it's going to be similar to um, a workshop style event where we're all going to be actively doing things. So it's less of me talking to you. It's more of us collaborating and doing things together. I hosted one last month and it was uh, very successful. So I'm hosting another one and I want to invite you guys. Um, what we'll do is we'll establish your social media goals. If you don't have those, we will create content together to help with your strategy 
and a strategy together. So we'll actually be physically doing these things for your own business. We will also, oh, where was the other one? Oh, it's Thursday, February 25th from 3 to 5 p.m. It's kind of a happy hour time. So I figured if you want to grab a drink, then that's a great time to do it for our event. It's a two hour event. And if you are interested in coming to the event, it's a $99 investment. Um, and I highly recommend it. We're going to be doing things to actively grow your business. It's not just real estate. It's anyone's. So you can network, you can collaborate. We'll have a drink together um, or if you want to drink some tea or whatever you want to drink. And we'll create a marketing plan and come up with your social media goals together. So that's something um, oh, we'll also create some content together. So I'll sit down with you and we'll actually write different posts and create different videos that we'll be posting together at this event. It's coming up end of the month. Would love to have you guys join as a thank you guys for being here. If you are interested, I'm going to give you $25 off. If you do want to register and you want to sign up before the end of the webinar. So feel free to just send me $74. It's $25 off uh, at Venmo or Zelle. If you do want to attend this event, it's February 25th, 3 to 5 p.m. Again, send me over right now and you'll get the discount for being on the webinar. I'm going to leave this up here until the end. So if you again, if you want to join, just send it over to me right now and I'll get you signed up for that event. Um, otherwise, you can still sign up after. You just won't get that promotion that I'm offering as a thank you for being here at the webinar. So let me do a quick recap of what we talked about today and we'll see if anyone has any questions. So we talked about the importance of being consistent. Make sure that you choose one thing and you do it consistently. You don't have to do all five things. We also talked about your feed posts and how you can really integrate your business and personal things onto your feed. Um, some people are leaving some questions. Uh, DD says, awesome. I'm in. Awesome. Well, go ahead and uh, you can just register by sending me right now and I'll make sure to send uh, so more questions on this. So Susanna says, for clarification, is the event a webinar? Yes, it is going to be online, but it's not a webinar where I'm talking to you. We're all going to be doing work together and chatting and collaborating. There might be some breakout rooms if it's too big. So it's going to be us working together, less of me um, directing you and showing slides. It's all, I'm going to say, let's brainstorm this, go ahead and write this down and then we'll all help each other as well. So again, I'll leave that up there. Um, Steven says, please send the invite. So the, the information is just 20, February 25th, three to 5 PM. It's going to be happy hour time. We can all grab a drink together and have some fun while we plan out our social media content. So back to the recap for today. If you are wanting to do feed posts, I recommend a mix of personal and business and doing that consistently. So say I'm going to post every Monday a, a business post, every Friday a personal post. If you have other posts throughout the week, that's great to incorporate them, but at least you have those two consistent posts. The okay, next thing is your Instagram stories. If you are doing stories, I do them at least every other day. You can do them, I would say, um, once, twice, three times a week, but be committed to doing them if you are going to be doing your Instagram stories. Okay, Make sure you're committed to doing them so that you are able to be consistent and show up at the top. Now, you saw those people at the top had those circles, right? Those circles are people that were consistent with their stories. If you don't have those circles, then you're not going to be able to be consistent with your stories. My computer is yelling at me to plug it in. So I'm going to plug in my computer right now before it dies. Let me grab my charger. All right, here we go. And then the other thing we talked about was on top of Instagram stories, Instagram live. I highly recommend going live if you feel comfortable with it. If not, then um, feel free to ask me for tips. But live video gets the most visibility more than any other type of content. If the least amount of people go live, your live videos can turn into IGTV videos. The IGTV videos are to make different series. Um, also Instagram reels, which that's something that is a little bit newer and it could work for you if you're consistent with it. So we had someone that says, Leanne says, thank you. Uh, thank you, Leanne, for joining. I know you have a, another Zoom meeting coming up. If you're consistent with it, then that can work as well. Okay, so feel free to just choose one of those things and be consistent with it. Now, as a thank you guys for being here, in addition to the $25 off, if you do want to attend my mastermind coming up at the end of the month, I'm also offering a bonus course. I have courses that I've created on LinkedIn learning. 
Um, I have a course on newsletters. If you're interested in it, I'm offering it to you for free just for being here. To, do, to access that, you'll have to log on to LinkedIn and send me a connection request if we're not connected or send me a message that you want the free LinkedIn newsletters course. I also have another course that is about virtual events. So I'm happy to send those to you guys for free. If you have an account on LinkedIn and it's a premium account, you already have free access. If you don't, I believe it's $30. It goes directly to LinkedIn. Um, you can buy it, but I'm going to give it to you for free as a thank you if you want to take some of my courses to get additional visibility. And then uh, last but not least, one more time to thank you guys for being here. If you're interested in the Get Mastermind, I'll put the information up again, $25 off before the end of this event. You can send the information there. And for those of you guys who want to access my previous SDAR webinars, if you go to my YouTube, my YouTube is Marketing Melody. I have a playlist of all of the SDAR real estate webinars. So if you've missed the previous ones or want to review, this webinar will also be up on there. And then some more awesome things I'm doing next month, March 3rd, I've partnered with SDAR again to do a Facebook webinar. So Facebook is going to be similar to what we talked about today with all of the different, um, with all of the different features that Facebook is offering right now. That's a free event with SDAR. You can look for that sign up link um, through SDAR. You can be, a, if you're not a member, it's still free. Oh, you know what, Didi, I apologize. The 59 was for something else I was doing. I think I accidentally put that on there. So it is $74. I'm not sure why it says 59. It was a different event that I was doing. So I apologize for the typo on there. Um, and my Venmo, I'll type it on here, is melody.tau. Uh, don't pay attention to the $59. That was for a bundle for my LinkedIn courses that I'm giving to you for free. So Stephen, if you want to register for the event, all you have to do is send me the 74 to my to my um, Venmo, and then I will go ahead and get you registered. Um, the 659 was was for my LinkedIn courses, but I'm giving those to you for free. So that's, don't pay attention to do, to do that. I'm gonna go ahead, oh, Zell's fine too. Um, so my LinkedIn courses, I have two, they're $29 each or $30 each, so it's about $59. Um, but again, I'm giving those to you for free if you connect with me on LinkedIn as a thank you. So don't, you don't have to pay the $59, don't worry about that. That was uh, other people that didn't get it for free, but you guys are getting the LinkedIn courses for completely free here. So next month I have the SDAR webinar. Um, also on February 18th, I have another free webinar with Goldwater Bank, which is sponsored by a lending company. That's a social media planning webinar on planning out your content for the year and how to do that effectively. That's going to be uh, February 18th, another free webinar. What I will do is I will email everyone who is in this webinar a reminder of all these things. Um, someone says, how do I sell you with phone or email? I'm on, on my phone. So you can do it on your phone after you log off. That's totally fine. I will let you guys still sign up right after the webinar um, if you can't use your phone because you're on the phone. Most people are on there. You can sell also on the computer. I know it works on the computer as well. So that's the question there. So I'm going to open it up and wrap up this webinar. I'm going to stop the recording, but I'm going to leave it open for Q&A. And I will still be here for another 10 minutes if you guys want any Q&A. But thank you so much for joining um, another amazing webinar. Thank you so much to SDAR for sponsoring this event. If you are happy with my webinars, go ahead and give SDAR some feedback, telling them that you want to see more and you want to see more of my webinars. They love hearing feedback from you and it helps them bring me back on to do more webinars for you guys. Um, I think they like them. I think this is my sixth or seventh one with them, but tell them that you want to see more. Maybe I can do this every month with you. And right now we do have one coming up in March with the SDAR, but please share feedback. Positive feedback is great. Most people only share negative feedback. So I encourage you to message the education people and say, I love this webinar. I want to see more of these webinars. David said, highly recommend working with Melody privately as well. She does an amazing job focusing on one-on-ones. That's true. Thank you so much, David. I do offer one-on-ones if you're interested in that. Um, we, I have information for that as well, but thank you again. I'm going to stop the recording. So this is Melody Tao with Marketing Melody, marketing your way to success. I will see you in the next webinar, uh, but I'm not signing off just yet. So I'm stopping the recording, but not signing off. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thank you so much for joining our webinar with SDAR.